Welcome back to Rolando Estacado. My name is Rolando, and for today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about the buoy profile and what makes it so effective. But we're talking about the profile itself, and most importantly, how we can take advantage of that very unique profile, especially when we look at different models of the buoy knife. All of us know that the American buoy knife tended to range between 9 and sometimes upwards of 12 to 14 inches in terms of the blade if we take a look at the historical models. But as the evolution of the buoy knife uh, has gone on throughout the 20th century and into the 20th, 21st century, what we're finding is that the buoy profile is so prolific and highly favored, uh, not only for its effectiveness, but also its aesthetics, that we're finding different versions of it, even in knives as small as four, four and a half inches. So it's uh, pretty interesting to see. In fact, the um, cold steel neck knife, the mini tack, has a buoy knife profile, which I really favor. I really like it a lot. And that one is, I think it's under four inches. So what we're going to cover today is how the buoy knife uh, differs in terms of how it informs our movement. Because there is a martial art that is connected to the use, the combative use of the buoy knife. So how is it going to inform our biomechanics, but also our tactical training in our tactical applications when we're moving with a live buoy knife. We're going to be covering um, the use of an 11 inch buoy knife. We're going to be using my custom Bagwell Damascus for that demonstration. But we're also going to take a look at a couple of Randall made knives. One of them is a model 14 seven and a half. It was famously used in a movie called Exposure and also another Randall made knife and it was made for uh, Nordic knives. Uh, this one is the um, Randall made Nordic special and it's closer to an English uh, Bowie knife, gentleman's knife version, which I, yeah, I think is really cool. It's a very favorable uh, to me. It's one of my favorite knives. So we're gonna take a look at the models first, what I like about it, um, how it feels in my hand. Then we're gonna take a look at demonstration and then we'll take a look at the summary. I really hope you Enjoy this video. Stick around. Stay tuned. So we have three very special buoy knives here. At the very top, for those of you who have been following my channel, what we have is my Bagwell Custom. It's a Damascus blade. So for those of you who have been following, you're very familiar with it. Uh, but the bottom two I haven't necessarily featured in my channel. So these are Randall made knives. And these Randall made knives, the, very, the one in the middle here is the Model 14 7.5, also known as the Attack. And when it was designed by Randall, I believe that was closer to the 40s and maybe even 50s, it was, it was more all purpose in terms of being able to uh, take care of the needs of uh, US military personnel as it relates to. Uh, daily tasks, but also being able to use it as a survival knife. The very bottom one is made by Randall made knives for uh, Nordic knives and Nordic Nordic knives is in Solvang, California. And uh, what they've designed here is closer to what is called an English buoy, more of a gentleman's knife. And just to show you some of the dimensions here, I'm going to, uh, so this is about 11 inches, seven and a half inches and seven inches. So just to feature, I'll show you a few of the features of like a bigger buoy, like this beautiful Damascus blade made by Bagwell. Just be mindful that you have this beautiful handle and this really long, beautiful blade. So there's all of this extra leverage, especially with the recurve over here, the false edge. So when you go into that back cut movement, when you go into that back cut movement, there's far more leverage, meaning there's just far more steel along the blade that just supports it. And if you note that the entire uh, transfer of energy from my body into my hand, into the handle, all the way through all of this edge and into this tip, that allows it to really multiply its force when you go into that back cut. So from my own personal practice, as far as developing my own skills with the Bowie knife, uh, from a combative purpose, 
I really prefer using the more classic version, the longer version, and what we have here is the very beautiful Bagwell Damascus blade, where the blade is 11 inches. Now, just to go off a little bit on a tangent here, uh, Damascus is traditionally a little heavier, and uh, just from my own experience, it really has uh, more of the, it has more capabilities in terms of educating my movement uh, because it's just a longer blade. And since it's a custom, there are things about uh, the blade itself that Bill had made specific to my skeletal anatomy so that when I move around with it, he kind of, when he spoke to me about it, it was, he said that the blade is going to lead you. And that I've found over the years of training with the Bagwell Bowie uh, has been very true. I th it's uh, this blade, uh, this beautiful Bagwell blade has educated me more about how to handle a knife than I've been able to impose my own ideas of how a knife should be handled. A little different with the Randall made knives. So this one is a seven and a half. And uh, this model was made famous in, uh, in a knife fighting movie and it had a, if i'm not mistaken it had peter coyote in it if you take a look at this knife this isn't a custom knife it is handmade but it's a little different in design not only is it shorter but take a look at that very thick stock so it's a little heavier in the handle mind you there's also this uh, lanyard loop and what that does is that you can secure it across your thumb and the back of your hand. So now it really secures the knife in your hand. It still has a very sharp false edge, but note that it doesn't have a very aggressive recurve. And because of that thicker stock in the middle, what it does is that it allows more of the weight to land in my hand. So when I start to do the um, buoy work with it, the back cut work with it, it doesn't transfer as well. It's one of those um, knives that prefers to be held a little more closely. It can still back cut. It can really still back cut. But what you'll see when I demonstrate it is that it lends itself a little less uh, from the buoy combatives and a little more traditional knife work. And in my experience, the Filipino knife work. But I really enjoy moving with this knife because, because of that substantial weight behind it. And of course, if you take a look at those um, finger grooves, it has this beautiful grip retention to it. And so when you move with it, it really moves. It doesn't have a life of its own. It's like really a part of you. So you have to be really super precise in your movements. And just to go on a tangent on it a little bit, because of that thicker stock, you have to um, really make sure that when you're moving with it, it's... Um, you have to be very comfortable with the weight. The weight is very different. It's not like the kind of lively feel that a Bagwell will have because when you move with a Bagwell Custom, it really feels like you're moving with a blade that kind of has an, uh, a mind of its own. And it's almost like riding a horse where you have to kind of become one with the blade uh, and you have to be the leader of the blade, but you have to kind of communicate with it as well. This one feels very much like it's a knife. It's a little on the, I wouldn't say heavy. It's just the weight is a little closer towards the handle. So as a result, it kind of just wants to merge with your movement. It's a little less educative when it comes to um, teaching you how to move with the knife. So you kind of have to impose your will with it. Uh, this one, this uh, very, very beautiful uh, Randall made Nordic special. And according to the description on the website, closer to the English buoy style, the gent style, this one is seven inches, but a little closer to what we know and as a traditional buoy knife. Notice that it's a much thinner profile, and in my opinion, far more elegant profile. I mean, just look how beautiful that is. And I just love wiping it down. But because it's lighter, because it has that thinner profile, it is really, really fast in the hand. And because of its lightness, and also because of its shorter length, it is seven inches, uh, you can 
I like using this as a combination of buoy combatives, but also with uh, Filipino combatives. Meaning I can still back cut with it, but wow, I can, it's like, it's just one with my fist. So it feels really, really comfortable in the hand. And frankly, uh, I don't know what it is about this knife, but even though it's a seven inch knife, it moves like a much shorter knife, almost like a five, five and a half incher. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut away and I'll show you how I like to move with it and I hope you enjoy it. So we're going to look at the Bagwell buoy first. And again, as a reminder, this is a Damascus blade that is of 11 inches. So it's a little heavier and it's a little longer. So initially we occupy center line, which means the blade is facing down the middle. And then we take the elbow out, but notice that the tip of the blade is still occupying the middle. From here, I raise the blade up, I raise the blade up, but the movement is initiated from the hip. Once I turn my hip, I simply let the blade drop down. And that allows the blade to completely drop on the target and then recover right down the middle. So we're gonna take a side view of the same exact movement. We occupy center line, take the elbow out to occupy center line with the tip, take it above, initiate the back cut from the hip. So almost always you want to make sure that this movement comes from the hip. Once you have that momentum that's being delivered from the weight of the buoy because it's 11 inches, it actually starts to flow on its own. And once you have that kind of connection with the tool that you're working with, especially if it's a custom, you start to put together these types of fluid movements that connects snap cuts, back cuts. So now what you have is a back cut flow. So again, here's a slow motion of it. And then as we start to put it together, it becomes this kinetic movement chain. Very easy, very fluid, and very pleasant and enjoyable to put together. Now we're gonna move on to the Model 14 Randall 7.5 Attack. Again, this was made famous in that movie Exposure. And this one is a 7.5 inch blade. It has a lanyard loop that surrounds the entire hand. So now it's completely secured. That quarter inch stock along the tang, it's a full tang construction, makes it so that most of the weight is actually towards the handle. So that back cutting motion requires a little bit of force generation from the arm. It's still something that happens, but note that my hip doesn't necessarily turn as easily as it normally would. So what I like to do with this is lead with the opposite shoulder because once I fire a back cut flow, I like to enter frame with the left hand and start that movement from a stabbing position. And that occurs when I open with a snap cut or a back cut and from there I enter with the opposite hand and then proceed from two close quarters. Close quarters is what this blade happens to be most proficient in, in my opinion, but you can still move with the back cut flow, but ultimately it excels after that back cut flow is fired with the opposite hand as you start to come in. After this flow with the seven and a half, we're gonna move on to the Randall Nordic Special. This one is a seven inch blade, but it is made of thick, uh, thinner stock, not thicker stock. This one is a thinner stock. So in many ways it's lighter and in many ways it is faster. I still have a lanyard loop attached to it to secure it to the hand. But what's interesting about this blade is that from the way it is designed and how light it is, I can still use the back cut flow. It's really nice, it's good for entries, but I can start to use some of the gunting movements and sewing machine movements that is found in Filipino knife fighting, which means that I can start to freely utilize both right lead and also switching to left lead because what happens is that by using back at flow and combining it with gunting movements, I can flow from long range to short range rather easily. So note that I am using gunting movements here where the hands come together, back cut flows where I'm using that false edge to utilize that sharpened clip. But do make note that as I'm doing all of this and putting it all together, the knife keeps moving from right lead to left lead. So now we're gonna take a look as why we cannot do the same exact thing 
with the custom bag well with the 11-inch blade. Note that that extra 11 inches can actually get in the way of that left hand. So as I'm back out flowing and I switch leads, I risk actually cutting my own forearm with that false edge. So a good example is as I'm flowing over here and moving, looking pretty good, looking pretty solid. But then as I turn here, oh my gosh, I am actually exposing my left forearm to my own weapon. So part of that situational awareness is not just to what's happening in your environment, but also what's happening to the tool in front of you. So be very mindful of the length of the knife that you're flowing with. So if we switch now to that seven and a half inch blade, I can actually start to change levels and lead with the left, but I can actually clear that left hand because there's roughly about four to five inches in give because the length is not the same. So I can do sewing machine movements, I can do gunting movements and actually slip leads and not have to worry about cutting the opposite arm. So now what makes the shorter knife more versatile is the fact that it is shorter in length. So there's a little bit of a compromise in terms of the back cut flow because there's not as much leverage. We will see the same thing here with the Nordic Special. We can still do back cut flows. We lose a little bit of that leverage. We lose a little bit of that hip movement, but that versatility is there because of that shortened blade. We can do Filipino movements like the guntings, the sewing machine, and combining that with a back cut flow, this makes these smaller knives extra versatile and extra fun to move with because now you can combine two paradigms, the back cut flow paradigm and the Filipino martial art paradigm. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video in terms of taking a look at the buoy profile and how it can actually inform you on how to move with different lengths of buoys. Stick around, stay tuned, more videos to come.